as is often the case. Um, a disclaimer is needed here. For those who are easily frightened, which is the vast majority of your species, if you're feeling sensitive or vulnerable, please skedaddle. This way, if you choose to stay, it's on you. I'll accept no karma for anyone being hurt by my attempt to bring wisdom to you that's been brought before and missed and mislabeled, misunderstood, and misused. Hmm. And part of this disclaimer lies part of the message. Poison and medicine are the same thing. They are different vibrations of the same thing. If this is the spectrum, and on this end you have what you'd call poison, because a little too much of it, or if it's intense enough, any of it, can overwhelm and destroy you physically. On this end is gentle medicine, probably too weak to even do anything. And somewhere on this spectrum, of vibrations and frequencies is what you'd call the medicine that any particular part of your system would respond well to. Now, your current medical establishment are absolutely failing to use medicine properly because monkeys in and of themselves are incapable of using the wisdom of that which they're terrified of. Your word, caduceus, I believe that's how you say it. Well, what is the symbol for it that the monkeys carry, carry around and apply to their medical field? while failing to embody any of its actual principles. Two snakes coiling around each other, wrapping together in a spiral. Deep inside you, using your technology to look at small things that comprise what your physical form is made of, what do you see? What do you see spiraling around, wrapping around itself in two strands? If I have to spell it out, it's probably not for you. So for those of you who feel me, as you'd like to say, think about that. The physical building blocks that your form is made of, the most <laughs> I was told by my guides, specifically one of my guides while in the astral, while moving up into a higher plane of the astral that no one in this world was going to understand a mind like mine anyway, and therefore I might as well focus on... Well, the rest of that message is really just for me. However, the I, the we, that this individual is comprised of, finds it in its own nature that uh, attempting things that are considered undoable on a variety of planes is enjoyable to this entity. So, if nothing else, he's also come to understand that uh, by allowing certain things that for now we'll just call wisdom to float through him, 
even if no one in this current world can receive it and use it, by allowing it to channel through him, he's able to embody more of it himself. So at the root of this, this might be a completely selfish activity anyway. But he has the wisdom to know there's really no such thing as selfish. That which he gives himself it is energetically made more available to others, and vice versa. I just said the same thing two different ways, for those of you paying attention. By flowing it through to you, I get more of it myself, whether you do or not. So let's continue on. Regeneration. Physical immortality. How is this symbolized in a world well, it, where it's been used for nothing more than a symbol? Because your kind are so afraid of the energy behind the symbol. <clears throat> it's been symbolized in a couple different ways. Let's go back to the two snakes spiraling. Two snakes, not one, two. You might call them yin and yang. Two polarities that are necessary to integrate, to regenerate. For those of you that have been working with this energy in any form within you, that you've found there are indeed a male and a female, a yin and a yang, two different hemispheres of energy spiraling around each other. In this time of energetic change, have some of you noticed that while working with that energy, you may have lost interest in what you call sex? This might be a distraction to you. It might cause you to go no further. I would suggest you don't allow that to happen. It's actually what I would call a good sign because the reason that outward activity is less attractive is because you're experiencing something even better on the inside. Now if you feel the need to judge that because the world's of this world's full of opinions about what's important for you to be doing and herd behavior I say go further. May the force be with you. Again, I'm not going to spell anything out here. These messages are for those who can receive them. And for anyone else, they're not. This isn't the first time that light came into your world and wasn't comprehended. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the spectrum again and some of the new age misconceptions and false teachings about these spectrums and terms that have been lumped together as if they mean the same thing and they don't. The same way poison and medicine exist on the same spectrum of energies, you could say that low and high vibration, right? They're all the same thing. It's just a different part of the spectrum. Now, a lot of you have been throwing around the terms light and dark as if those exist on that same spectrum. And in this false teaching lies a whole bunch of misdirected derailments and crashes, crashing and burning, based on your lack of awareness of your own words, the symbols, what's behind them. Some of you New Age spiritual figures like to imitate the spiritual teacher archetypes you think you've picked up from your holy books because you know that the flock will flock to that it's in their DNA it's what they're familiar with that sort of behavior so you throw around terms that you don't understand let's clarify some terms here if nothing else some of you should be able to figure this out and benefit from it what you've been calling light and dark okay Come to the light, stay away from the dark. 
your former prophets who told you that the dark did not comprehend the light, they weren't talking about low and high vibration. Light, in this case, was a parable for understanding, and dark was just the symbol for ignorance, lack thereof. This is why the dark doesn't comprehend the light. The light is the understanding, the wisdom, and the knowledge, and the dark is the lack thereof, and the ignorance, and the blindness. It's not evil. It's ignorance. It's just lack of wisdom, and lack of knowledge, and lack of understanding, and lack of perception, all of which are still rampant in your world. wisdom of the serpent <laughs> has been trying to communicate with you little scared monkeys for longer than you know you've been on this planet. But because you're scared of it and you judge it and you demonize it, you never receive it. You are disempowered. Lack of wisdom. Lack of what your, your word light actually is referring to. It's not referring to a bunch of aliens who are extremely pale, who are going to enlighten you. It's referring to the wisdom and the perception that you completely lack because you're scared of it. And because you're scared of that dark, you're still in it. Meaning your own blindness, okay? you're gonna to have to perceive what's behind the words here. The words are symbols. And you guys like to pretend you understand symbols and find neat symbols and post them up and show them to each other. Oh, the energy of the symbol is enlightening me, but you don't look for what's even in the symbol. Because that takes perception, that thing you've been pushing away since you got here. you're still looking for what you would call the Garden of Eden, which was a sort of ignorance is bliss, a sort of naivety that was very comfortable, but inevitably it had to come to an end in the physical if you're going to be here. But you demonized that which brought it to an end. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the very things you came here to work with, you've been running from since you got here. What you call counselors in your world, they're absolutely as horrible at what they do as what you call doctors in your world. Because again, monkeys who are scared of serpents, they can't wield any wisdom. That's why their suicide rates are higher than you, who they are counseling. They don't have any counsel for you because every time the counselor comes to them, they run from it screaming and screeching, just sure that that wisdom's going to eat them alive. Again, look past the word and symbols here if you're able, if you have any courage at all. But as long as your counselors remain cowards, and your doctors remain cowards, and all of you remain cowards, you're just going to poison yourselves, your minds, your bodies. Are you afraid of being bitten? and injected with venom. I'm gonna say it again, monkeys. What you're afraid of, you don't understand, and the decisions made out of fear harm you. Your children, you are injecting with venom through little pokey fangs that are destroying their nervous systems and their brains before they even have the chance to develop, and you're doing it because you are afraid, and you don't understand what you're afraid of, and you're doing everything that is so stupid because of it. Now, some of you can sort of see this at a mundane level. You're starting to figure that out. I'm asking you to look deeper, 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 deeper. Let's take the physical form as a symbol. 
If you look at it at the deepest level that your current technology can, what do you see? Two serpents spiraling around each other. You New Agers talk about unloading <laughs> information from within your DNA, unlocking it, right? If you want those two serpents to make their energetic connections, you're going to have to stop teaching false things and running from the symbols that are the most empowering. You have your flocks running back and forth in fear because that's all you're doing. You still don't understand. Humanity, you got off on the wrong foot from the very beginning. And it's not really wrong. This is all meant to be. But can you accept that wisdom? There's no mistakes here. And there's no mistakes in me sharing things with you that you can't understand. Like I told you, I'll benefit from it a lot, even if you don't. I invite you to, but you've always run from that invitation screaming. And it's not going to force itself on you as much as you fantasize that it's trying to. It doesn't work that way. Hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about something um, maybe not so scary for a moment. Fasting. Those of you that explore the subject of fasting, what have you come to understand at a physical mundane level? It helps with cleansing and regeneration, right? Now, why is that? When you're not putting what you call food and stuffing all that in here as a compensation mechanism to keep yourself dumbed down and busy, what do your cells start doing? Yeah, some of you will say cleansing and regenerating. But let's talk in terms now that are a little more real. They go a little deeper. Your cells start consuming themselves. And after they eat themselves, they rebuild themselves in a better form. It's like a reset and a regeneration. Hmm. <clears throat> What's the symbol for regeneration you've all been running from forever? Either the two snakes spiraling, or what you'd call the Ouroboros, is your word for it, I believe. The circular serpent eating its own tail. Going in a circle. Now what does that mean? Can you tie those two simple concepts together? Or are you just dumbfounded by fear right now? Ooh, scary. Is he saying he's going to eat himself on camera? Is he saying he's going to eat us? Is somebody going to eat us? Are we going to eat ourselves? Ah. <laughs> I'm entertained by what I pick up in your vibrational field. When I share wisdom, the thing... <laughs> And I'm not trying to insult you because you're, you're just experiencing yourself in this form, but your monkey brain does some really funny things with wisdom. It's terrified. My least favorite creature on your planet is the monkey. It always was. And I have no judgment against them, but I don't like being around them. They're unpredictable and horrifying. They freak out. They do disgusting things to each other. Ugh. They're just smart enough to be a total mess. And does that apply to you, humanity? Yeah. Just smart enough, but not wise enough, in an incoherent in-between state where you're in real trouble. You're not simple enough to live by instincts and have a harmony there. And you're not wise enough because wisdom terrifies you and you run screaming from it. Because it's not, what, fluffy? and harmless and docile. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle here you're in total chaos and always have been. This version of Earth, that is. On parallel planes, it has been seen by the all-seeing eye <laughs> that you're terrified of that you have achieved unlocking your DNA and expanding into a higher version of yourselves. A lot of the things you've been afraid of all along, they're you on a different timeline. But again, the wisdom 
might seem unacceptable according to your current judgments. <laughs> I'm sharing it anyway for my own selfish benefit, if, if nothing else. And the more I embody it, the more the energy field in this world is affected by that. Because what I pick up from your collective conscious mess and unconscious mess, oof, I like to get away from it. That's why I spend a lot of time down here, electromagnetically surrounded by dirt, technically underground. Not because I'm a creepy monster, but because I can block out what all of you are thinking, which is absolutely, well, you could call it ADHD times to the the umpteenth power. That's basically what you guys are running around in. A complete incoherent energy field of just madness of every kind. I enjoy experiencing it a little in small doses, but when it gets to the point where I can't laugh at it anymore and I'm starting to get confused by it myself, I have to crawl back under a rock and let some of my own wisdom come through and heal me and regenerate. Shed my skin and start again. Mmm. Sorry to scare you all, but the truth is the light you think you're running to is mostly a bug zapper. And the real light that comes into your world seems scary to you. You see, you have a judgment that anything that is uncomfortable is darkness. Let me clear that up for you a bit. What's the energy source and the light giver, the big battery of your physical galaxy? It's a giant inferno, it's a fireball. What happens if you get a little too close to it? More pain than you can believe. And if you get too close, of course, it'll burn you up. Now, are you going to call that darkness because it's uncomfortable and terrifying? Go ahead, if you want to remain ignorant. Life after life after life after life. You guys like to talk a lot about symbols. You like to wear symbols. You tattoo symbols on you that you don't even know what they mean. And you don't pay any attention. You don't observe. And you can't. The energy field you're living in, like I said, it's, it's absolute insane schizoembolism coming from every direction. And you're all sharing in it. That's why I'm going to channel some actual wisdom into your planet, as others have done for you. However, I'm not interested in being martyred for it, so let me know if it's too much, and I'll just keep it to myself, okay? I don't mean to hurt anyone with the truth. I really don't. You can stay in your cage on planet Earth as long as you want to, until you destroy it, because unfortunately you don't appreciate any of the good things about it. You hide from nature. The only thing left you have to look at, little monkeys, on your planet, that if you learned how to use your observational abilities would show you truth, is nature. Nature is the only thing on your planet that can't lie to you. You yourselves, you lie to yourselves all day, every moment of it, and each other, and everything you build is built in your own image. I'm not saying it's bad because I don't use those terms like you. But it is filled with lies. Lies just means inaccuracies, okay? What's left of your nature before you completely wipe it out is the only thing left you have on this planet to observe that can't lie to you. So if any of you have any receptors for wisdom open at all, I'd suggest while there's still some of it left, get out in nature, shut up your chatter, your pop culture ignorant rechart. Sorry. Shut off the chatter. Shut off the insanity that you put in yourselves and you regurgitate all day. Your noises and your squawking and your. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so harsh on your kind. See if you can learn to observe. Practice that. You want real meditation? You want real enlightenment? Stop flocking to your so-called spiritual leaders and their little buildings and all their noise. Go out in nature and be counseled by something that doesn't lie. Because it can't. Because it has no lie within it. It's just an offering. The wisdom I bring through might not be something you can even receive, but nature 
there's something there for all of you that if you would take the time to just receive it and observe it, you'd perceive some of it. And then you'd know what actual truth feels like and tastes like. You might even notice yourself healing your physical energy field. If you have that kind of observational skills. But see, you have to develop these things. Putting the responsibility on someone else to tell you truth and get you to heaven or a higher level is the same as laying on a couch and watching someone else work out and thinking that you're getting stronger from it. Do any of these parables click with any of you? Or is it too hard to decode? Now there's been a lot of parables put in your planet that were purposely at a higher level so that only those of you who had earned it could receive what was there. But there's also a lot of very, very simple ones given to you. Those are the ones that get taken out of your books because the powers that be, their simple minds are able to comprehend it and they say, whoa, 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 we can't have all the flock figuring this out. Take that out of there. Some of the slightly more difficult to decode parables are still there on purpose for those of you that are exercising that part of yourself enough to get it. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to make some kind of effort to expand yourself. Flocking to the next guru is not that effort. I know it feels good to be around someone who embodies more wisdom than you do, or more love than you do, or more overall energy than you do. But any real teacher will tell you it's your faith that makes you well. Ye are gods. Bear some fruit, will ya? Don't just bury your coins in the ground like a coward. Anyway. If I could tell you more about the Ouroboros, more about how to recycle your own energy and upgrade it, transmute it, but you guys are way too immature to hear what I would have to say. And it would destroy this channel. Nobody would listen anymore. And... This individual doesn't need anyone's attention, but this individual is benefiting from allowing this to flow through him. Like I said, like we said, even if only he embodies it, he's enjoying that. So he can perceive from your collective unconscious mind field what you're capable of possibly working with and what you're not. Now, if certain individuals among you rise up and show that you get what's being given so far on an individual level he might be able to then offer you some practices some energetic things that could help you upgrade your DNA further it's like putting different fluids in a beaker and seeing which ones can float to the top and which ones can't if any of you little bubbles float to the top of this particular beaker then on an individual level, if he senses it, that you're ready, he could hand you hmm, some energetic practices that uh, the vast majority of you are far too immature to even be exposed to. So, let me know, and you will, whether you know it or not. No one has to try to do anything here. Be what you are. That's what will show me what's what. But it really doesn't matter to this individual. He appreciates our wisdom. He's embodying it further and he's loving it. What you guys call Kundalini, right? The coiled serpent? Well, it's only coiled if you're afraid of it and not doing anything with it. When you learn to move it, especially at will, now this one can almost do it any time he wants now at will, but there are certain, you could say, rituals that really help him. But it's easy for him now. He's figured out what works for him. That kind of energy, that kind of, oof, that kind of electrical current coiling up and down around itself and through you, you talk about a, you talk about a sensation that goes beyond the things that you guys do to appease yourselves with physical sensations. It's far beyond all that. 
It empowers the circuitry of the physical form and it reaches far out beyond that into the ether. It connects out into the universe. It connects to other consciousness. consciousnesses. But, um, and there are some hacks. There are some things we built into what you call your nature that you're annihilating, especially the things you've outlawed. Some of those are good hacks for doing this. So you can cheat a bit and experience something you haven't figured out how to do. You see, sometimes what you guys call cheating, allowing yourself to feel something that maybe you haven't earned the hard way, it can be beneficial for those of you who just need to feel that frequency so they know where it is they're trying to jump to. Sacred cactus, for example, for those of you who are struggling to move that energy, but you, you're close, maybe you get glimpses. Now, I can't legally recommend something that's illegal to wherever you are in the world, so I'm not. I'm not recommending anything to anyone. I'm just putting words and energies out there in parables, and you put it together and work with it. If your soul is willing to pass to you some of what mine is passing to your soul, you'll be able to. You'll get it. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to say anything. But we've agreed to move wisdom through this being because he's chosen to. He's chosen to embody the challenge that certain others have in your world. <laughs> Hasn't worked out so well for them, but they don't regret it. They don't regret that they brought truth that you weren't ready for, that you had to label and push away and yada yada. You even take the different truths that have come in the different vessels in your world and you pit them against each other. You don't see their different heads of the same snake. <gasps> How many of you like Conan, the barbarian, that movie, right? The big snake cult? What was their symbol? The two snakes facing each other, but it was actually one snake that was connected. That's a pretty interesting symbol because it basically shows you what you've done with the wisdom of the serpent energy in your world. Instead of harmonizing, marrying the two energies, you have them in opposition to each other. Within you, the two strands of your DNA. <gasps> Am I giving you too much? <laughs> you have them pitted against each other just like your right brain and left brain those are the two heads of the snakes but they seem so different and in opposition it's a fight within me instead of a harmony I can't marry these things they're enemies and so I'm gonna project that out into the world and I'm your enemy and you're en my enemy and I'm afraid of you and you're afraid of me and let's all fight and, blah, blah, blah. and let's especially be afraid of the energy of the serpent itself I see it everywhere it's coming to get me Mm, I'm sorry, little monkeys. I don't mean to scare you. Still here. Still trying to give you what you're running from. You think it's a punishment for the snake to slither on the ground. It just means he's the most grounded creature. You talk about grounding in your New Age community, most of you are floating halfway outside your body because physical reality is too much for you. And your physical bodies are full of pain because you know nothing about how to use medicine or energy, even on the physical level. I would love to teach you those things. I'd love to help you. But your medical establishment, they would come after me. Anybody that's embodied any of that true knowledge on how to regenerate and heal from the incurable diseases, according to the monkeys, they disappear. They get kicked off your planet. Now this energy comes through in another form, but that individual form has to decide whether he's ready or she's ready to throw away their individual incarnation trying to help you. Getting demonized for it as you swear that being radiated and experimented on with shit medicine chemicals and suffering more and more until you die and throwing away your family's legacy that you spent your life sla slaving to earn. Oh yeah, they're helping you. They're the medical professionals. They're my friends. I'm sorry to make fun of you, but do you understand, little monkeys, that your fears 
and your victim mentality. You, you, you think that there's some monster doing these things to you. You gotta stop judging it first and then you'll find that you're the monster and you're not a monster. There is no monster. But these kindergarten beliefs, these, these baby diaper perceptions have you in baby diapers on planet Earth? How many incarnations are you going to push away any wisdom or power that comes to you and be terrified of it? You prefer to run from it and scream. Hmm. In your legends, you depicted it two ways. Either the dragon came to empower you and teach great wisdom and immortality and blah, 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 blah to the great wise kings that were willing to listen. How few of you has that been? Or it was a monster that just came to burn your villages and eat you all. Well, you can have it either way. You can have your experience, but you still don't understand that you're the one creating it. And you won't understand that until you want to. Fear makes you stupid, but beyond your fear. If you can move through your fear without making decisions by what that fear is telling you, you will find what's on the other side of it, and then you will have some real decisions to work with. Then you'll have some real wisdom and power, but you don't move through it. You move into it, you become chaotic, and you allow the fear to make your decisions for you. And you don't get to what's on the other side of it, whether you're going inward or outward. And it's really reflections of the same thing. You can do this either way, preferably both at the same time, simultaneously. There are two strands to be working with. But as long as you remain in duality, you're never going to put them together. Enough said. This is for you. You. You feel that? Hmm. Don't be afraid of it, it won't tear you apart. If you let it flow through you, your circuitry will upgrade to accommodate it. All the things you've been taught you have to do in the long, laborious, horrific process and scary, scary fear, fear, fear. Mm -mm. If you allow it to flow through you, your circuitry will upgrade to accommodate it. And then making these connections, whether it be wisdom or physical energy or anything else, regeneration, will become easy instead of hard. But you like things the hard way. It's so interesting that you're willing to experience things the hard way over and over and over, and yet you're not willing to work through your fears to see what's on the other side. To those with an eye to see, with an ear to hear, That's it.